Hello, everyone. Welcome back to After the Snuff. I'm your host, John Millsip, and I am joined here by Rob and Emily, two people who are gone far too early from Moneta Bank, and uh, they're going to help me break down the second and third episodes of this season. I hate the fact that I am sitting here with you two right now. Uh, I pegged both of you going very far in this game, and both of you kind of had some unfortunate circumstances not go in your favor so you're here today how are you doing how how has it felt watching back these first few episodes of the season i i think that what sums it up the most is i just rewatched my episode just now and the first thing one of the first things i did was text lily i need to do another one because i feel like i need to get back in the game so i feel like that was my biggest takeaway for sure gone too soon but no regrets in terms of the game itself. I echo. Love to hear that. Go up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I echo what Emily says. I I have the itch to play. I think it's hard to um not get or to get voted out early and then not have that itch to play like immediately after. Like you're like I want to prove that I'm not a bad player. So yeah, I definitely have a uh, have the itch. Well. I mean, I, I I will speak for all of DCP. We're always happy to have <laughs> you two back because we were happy to have in the first place. And just reading the comments from people on your exits, everyone else wants you back too. So we're going to keep that in mind <laughs> moving forward. But let's start diving into these episodes because we had some really interesting episodes this week. And episode two starts off with the introduction of the vault. Now, of course, the vault was introduced in the first round. Um... Rob, you were on the Oro tribe to start. No one from your tribe went to the vault um, in that first initial scramble. And we see it kind of bites you a little bit here when on your swap tribe they're talking about is it safe to target you or not. Why? What was going through your mind in that first round that prevented you from going to the vault at all? Um, I just wanted to make sure I was getting as much face time with my tribe as I possibly could. Um, I didn't want any targets on my back because honestly, like I know from my past experiences playing, um, the kind of player I am is I need to be constantly making connections, um, constantly being in people's faces. Cause like, I'm a, I feel like I'm a slow burn kind of personality, but yeah, every, what was going through my head is I just wanted as much face time as I possibly could. Any time away at all felt like bad for me. So that was, uh, that was what was going through my mind. Yeah. That's totally fair because especially in these minis, it, it's so condensed. You only get so much time yeah. and a lot of games, don't go into a tribe swap right away. So it's really, it is it quite important to make those connections in that first round. Emily, you were on the winning tribe in that first round. When you had the opportunity to check out that vault while uh, the original Oro tribe was in tribal council, did, did you take a look? And what were your first impressions of it? I definitely took a look um, just because I wanted to know what was out there and what could be potentially obtained. Um, I didn't partake in purchasing anything at that point just because I didn't have the pure, I just didn't have the monetary funds at that point. Um, <laughs> uh, so it was, it was nice to look just to see what's out there. I thought it was a really, a lot of really interesting pieces. I think the most, the trickiest piece, which are, which came out in my episode is people not knowing how much demand or how much, sorry, how much supply there was of each one, which I think mm -hmm. definitely came into play in terms of inner communications during my, uh, during episode three. Yeah, absolutely. We definitely see a lot of that talk, and, and we can break it down a little bit more once we get there. Uh, but first, uh, we have to talk about the big moment in episode two, right? You guys show up for this challenge right away. Rob, you've just voted someone out of the game. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're told, okay, each person has to vote for someone on the other tribe. All you're told. What's going through your head there? Like, how, well, who did you end up voting for in that sequence? And what guided your decision? I, I can't, who did I vote for in that, in that situation? I can't even remember. I don't, I don't, I don't personally know that answer. Uh, Carly was <laughs> the one who ended up getting it 
from the Argento tribe. And then Kyle was voted uh, by the Argento tribe on the Oro tribe. I voted what Kyle. Process... Yeah. Okay, Emily, like, let, let's walk through that then. What, what was your thought process there? I think I was, I was genuinely trying to figure out if it was someone we would take from the other team is I think what I was perceiving mm-hmm. it to be. Um, watching back episode three, Andy thought Kyle and I knew each other before the game. That's okay. We did not. Um, but I, I was more just trying to be like, okay, who is who is kind of being like chatty or like it seems like kind of open to mm-hmm. gameplay based on kind of like the larger group conversations. And it seemed like Kyle was like that. So I was like, all right, um, I'll vote for him to bring over to our team. So that was kind of my mm-hmm. thought process. Um, I did not know it would make team captains. Um, which was very intriguing twist for sure. <laughs> and, and Rob, what about you? What, what, how do you feel about this? Uh, because you've played a game where this type of things happened before. We played a game yeah. together where we were told, hey, vote for someone on the opposing tribe. And, and this happened. So, yeah. so what's going through your, your head when you see that? I mean, I think like minis already, you know, going into a mini, it's going to be a fast paced game. So like when something is, there's a switch in the game this quick, um, it really hits you in the face and it's a scary moment. Um, and like I said previously, I'm the kind of guy that needs to get as much face time with the people, you know, that I'm initially placed with right away. So any kind of change of pace is definitely scary for me. Um, but yeah, that's how I feel. Okay, and pri- just before we get into the swap, we did see a little bit of the original Argento tribe just talking about kind of their connections there. Uh, a lot of the conversation seemed to be just about, you know, how everyone was feeling. Because, Emily, my impression from speaking to you guys in confessionals and also just watching these episodes back, you guys really were jiving with each other at the beginning of this game. You were You were feeling each other, and you all felt very comfortable with each other. Sure, we have... Andy V saying things like, oh, I was a little cautious about Yap, but the more I talk to him, the more comfortable I feel about him. I really feel like Evan's someone I can pull under my wing because I think he'll be really loyal. What were your initial just relationships with everyone on that first Argento tribe? Honestly, everyone was really welcoming and really nice. I think it definitely makes sense because this is just like such a fun environment. And so everyone entering into this kind of have a similar like, an interest of kind of getting to know other people and playing the game in a fun way. Um, so I definitely really enjoy the uh, kind of the first initial conversations with everyone. And I also kind of use that time as well, just to kind of take note of everyone's like personality types and what they're willing to divulge, mm-hmm. which kind of, I know I said this in, I think my confessional, one of my interviews, which actually like led into why I made my specific selections when it came to tribal draft. Um, I did really like mm-hmm. that team though. So that was definitely, um, I also would consider myself, I call it an acquired taste. So, um, <laughs> so I kind of um, uh, empathize with Rob's feeling, definitely more of a slow burn f- person as well. So that was definitely, definitely shook up my world a little bit when I was drafted to a new team. Well, let, let's get into this draft because it's the interesting thing. So Carly and Kyle are selected as these team captains and they have to pick. And we even see Kyle mention uh, later in, one of these episodes where he says, for some reason, I thought I was just picking my entire team and that it wouldn't be like the person he picks, pick the next person. And Emily, you were picked first by Kyle. Uh, how did that feel? Um, if it, I, it felt good. Um, I, it felt good, but I was also very hesitant to feel excited about it because automatically that means there's a target on my back. If I'm first chosen for anything, my goal for the game was to really go under the radar for a little bit and kind of show my skills and pieces and not just come out the gate, like trying to be a powerhouse because those people typically have a target on their back or taken down. Um, so mm-hmm. I felt like very, I, it was a very nice, I was very flattered, but I was also like, Oh, well, like, if, are people going to try and take me out now? Like, that's not great. Um, but then when I went, when it was my turn, I was like, okay, I need to take someone from my team because I I need to take someone from my team and I need to take, take someone from my team who was on, who I think would be good at the game and also who didn't share that much about themselves because they're now we're going into a mixed mm-hmm. team. So that's why I chose Naropa because I felt like he was very friendly. 
seemed very good at the game, seemed very easy to work with, but also didn't really share too much about himself or his skill sets or his hobbies or things like that. He was very kind of vague on that end. And I thought that would be an advantage to work with because if we are going to be combining with um, this new team, I didn't want the, uh, I didn't want them to know the, our, the team we were going against to know that much about Naropa and myself and our skills. Cause I was like, at this point it's, I really liked working with them, but now I have to make new loyalties to get until to get to the point where we merge. And, and when you say that in confessional in episode three, I was, I was floored. It's such a fantastic thought process to have about approaching this draft situation because you, I correctly identify you need at least one person from your original tribe there. So you don't get picked off. And you also identify Naropa as the best one because he didn't divulge much about himself. So there's not any information going out. I, I thought it was a genius move. And it just really go, went to show how much, how analytical you were being in this game and approaching it. Now, you had that luxury. Let's go to the other side of the spectrum. Rob, you're picked last. Yeah, yeah. How, how uh, did that feel? <laughs> it definitely had uh, a little bit of the uh, middle school feeling to it you know being picked net last in the, in the middle school recess games you know it definitely um had that that sort of feeling to it um it also immediately made me start you know recalculating every conversation i had um originally with my original tribe and and thinking like why didn't they pick me where where did i had where had i gone wrong um that you know there was a couple people that had the opportunity to pick me and I didn't get picked so early. So um, it was, uh, it had me really rethinking a lot of my initial conversations um, and yeah, why I didn't get selected. So was there anything that particularly stood out to you, especially after rewatching the episodes that maybe made you realize this is why you weren't selected? I think, um, especially with Andy C, I think I came on a little bit too strong. Um, he was mm -hmm. someone that I had wanted to work with, but now, you know, watching back, I think that, um, I think it was a little bit too much in his face. And I think I scared him a little bit too much, um, with the immediate, uh, Browns connection. Cause I saw him wearing the Jersey and I couldn't help, but say something. And I knew immediately it was a bad idea probably to say something. Cause now we have that target on our back. Everyone knows oh they have an immediate connection right off the bat but it was playoff game day and i had to say something so um i i kind of regret that move because i thought that andy could have been a good ally for me had we uh talked about the browns connection privately to begin with instead of mm -hmm. publicly me right. saying that right away so that's something um that i definitely think i went wrong and andy not only that scared him but i think um maybe he probably shared that with his allies along the way. And so there was a, a little bit of an influence of that. And I think that definitely um, set me off immediately off on the wrong foot. Yeah, that's very interesting because sometimes those those initial connections are so important in the game. The, the ability just to talk with someone and have that type of common ground to connect with, especially in a mini where you don't get a lot of time to really get to know people. Having any way in is so important, but yeah. showing other people that you have that way yeah. in can also be pretty detrimental. It definitely felt like I just laughed in a game of poker or something like that. You know, I definitely gave right. away my poker face there. <laughs> and we won't bring up the results of that Brown game because I don't think anyone <laughs> wants to relive that. But Andy does yeah. ask, what you, how do you think the Browns are going to do this year? <laughs> um, I think that it all depends on how Deshaun Watson performs. Um, I think that we have the right pieces in the right place, despite paying a little, some, some players a little bit too much money. But, um, I think for one more year, we have the right pieces in the right place, Andy. And I think, uh, this could be the year to do it if, if Deshaun performs. So go brownies. <laughs> Shout out. Andy. There you have it. You heard it here first. <laughs> Rob right. is saying the Browns can win the Super Bowl this year. I, I, Lock it I, in, I, everyone. I, I think they can win. <laughs> don't hold me to saying that they will win because, yeah, I, I don't want to take that bet. 
All right. So af after this uh, swap's all done, we, we have our two new tribes. On, on the new Oro tribe, we have Kyle, Emily, Naropa, uh, Andy C, Kayla, and Jabbar. And on the new Argento tribe, we have Carly, Simona, Andy Vogel, Evan, Yap, and Rob. And that leaves Sam on the ends. And Alex and McKenna mentioned, okay, Sam, oops, I, we have an extra person. You're going to the vault. You're, you're essentially on Exile Island for this round. So that means Sam gets to survive the round, gets to get a little bit of an advantage, but also gets this awkward position. And, and Rob, this comes up a lot in the discussion about why ultimately you have to go. He's coming back to the losing tribe. Which means if he comes back and you're still there, you have someone from your original Oro tribe that yeah. can join you. And it seemed, based on the conversations that everyone was having, that really led to a lot of fear about keeping you around, even though maybe it was better for some people than not. Yeah, I, I definitely think that um, it was going to be next to impossible to convince them that I wasn't working with Sam to begin with, because I mean, think about it. Like in a, before that first vote, they have to assume that everybody had an equal or close to equal amount of face time with each other on our original tribe. Mm -hmm. So they probably assumed in some form or fashion, I had some deal with Sam. So that was like, I mean, at that point, obviously it was just such a, such a killer to get swapped that way and then have him go to exile Island, so to speak. And, um, yeah, I knew that it was going to be impossible to convince that new tribe that, oh, me and Sam had no kind of connection together. So, yeah, that, that, that's and, how and I what we see, all that. Yeah, absolutely. And then what we see Sam have to do there, Sam has to solve a Sudoku-esque puzzle where he has to put vaults in a grid and none of them can repeat in the same row column. Rob, how do you think, how do you feel you would have done on that uh, task? Keeping in mind what Sam says is that he only had five minutes, but he actually had the entire round until Alex and McKenna read the votes. So that entire round to solve that one puzzle. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't think I would have done that well on that, to be honest. Uh, I, I really don't. <laughs> um, that's not my kind of forte. My forte is is more uh, knocking cups off uh, platforms. <laughs> well, let's talk about that because we we get into this immunity challenge here, and yeah. it's an escalating challenge. The first task has to be done by one person. The second task has to be done with that first person, and then two additional people, and then yeah. the third task has to be done by the entire tribe. Right. So that that first task is stacking a ten solo cup pyramid and then knocking it down using three ping pong balls. The reason there's a there we mentioned three ping pong balls that's the restriction. So someone like Rob who can knock it down in one shot can only use one. But the three means that if you don't knock it down with those balls, you have to retrieve those balls before you can throw again. Rob, you killed this portion of the challenge. It was so impressive to see you just like yeah. single-handedly like you throw a single ball knocks everything down. Yeah. What made you well, stand up to be that one person? And what technique did you use to knock this down in one go? Well, first of all, um, yeah, I I think that that was my, my, like, I didn't have many legs to stand on when the swap happened. I think um, had I stepped up in the challenge and, and showed these guys that, you know, I would have been a team player and somewhat decent in future challenges, even though I don't think that, especially in a mini that carries much weight. I think it was one of my, you know, only ways at that point to send any kind of message to say, Hey, I'm, I'm with you guys. I'm going to be a team player. Um, but I, I know that, you know, that's just like going back to the college drinking games and stuff like that. That's what I knew that I could do that kind of challenge. Like that's just my forte. So, um, yeah, I just threw it really hard. That's the technique I use, throw ball hard. I knocked the base of the cup out and uh, everything else followed suit. Um, and then, yeah, with the card throwing, it's again, just the college drinking games. It's like a 
just playing beer pong. So just turn back the clocks a couple of years and um, yeah, was able to get the job done for my team in that, in that portion. <laughs> now, Emily, your tribe kind of struggled determining who was going to do each section in this challenge. What's your mentality when someone has to stand up essentially as like a hero role in this challenge? What were your thoughts about it? And how did you feel about how your team ultimately came to a conclusion? I think especially um, like being like starting off as a minority on this team, it's important not mm -hmm. to over, it's important not to over volunteer or under volunteer in terms of your contribution. So I knew that in terms of the balancing the ball and the cup, I knew I could do that because I like, like Rob said, call drinking games. I got this. I knew I could do <laughs> at least that portion. Um, but some of the other pieces I knew I wouldn't be as successful at. So I, wanted to make sure that my team knew that I was willing to do like was willing to volunteer for certain tasks, but also kind of own my own weaknesses as well. And not, and I didn't want to be the hero at this point in the game. I felt like if I was mm -hmm. the hero too early again, I was really trying to fly under the radar and just really help us get the W not be the problem child and also not be the person who carries the team on their back. Because I think both, both have a, a way of making someone a target. Absolutely. And, and I think owning your weakness is something people don't do enough in these games. A lot of the times people feel that mentioning, you know what, I'm not very good at this, paints that weakness on them and pay, makes it so that people kind of start second guessing their usefulness to a tribe. But, and especially when it ends, results in you winning a challenge, it really just goes to show that you have that analysis and that, um, that self-realization necessary to put yourself in a position to succeed. So I, I think it's something that's really undervalued. So, and especially in a position like yours, because I think so, I think a lot of people in that minority, and Rob, maybe correct me if I'm wrong here, a lot of people in that minority will feel the necessity to go in the hero role to prove their worth. Rob, like when you were making that decision, did come into that hero role, was that part of your thought process there or did that somebody else lead you into that role? Oh, I mean, I, I definitely think that um, it had everything to do with, you know, trying, like I said earlier, just trying to prove some kind of worth, worth to these guys. Um, it, it was a five, one situation. And like I said, um, it really was like one of my only ways to kind of get in with them. So, yeah, I would say that, yeah, I would, I would agree. I would say if I was in Rob's position, I probably would have pursued the hero trait, but because I had an Europa, it gave me that space to be able to be, to make that decision. I feel like, honestly, Rob, it seems like you really didn't really have that decision because you kind of had to prove your worth to make them keep right. you around. I had a little right. bit of wiggle room because I at least had an Europa to help to make me a two and a six. I mean, I'm not going to lie to like it. And I, I totally agree with what you said, John, about like not enough people in these games own their weaknesses. If this had something to do with like solving puzzles or there was an anchor for solving puzzles, I probably would not have done it. I knew that I would have been good at this challenge. So that that's a, it, I won't lie that that was part of the motivation. It wasn't purely strategic stepping up into that role, like part of the motivation. Like I knew it was, I would be really, really good at that. And I, like I said, I probably would have, not done it if it was something I wouldn't have been good at. So just the challenge itself came into play. Yeah, absolutely. And just as important as it is to identify your weaknesses, identifying your strength in yeah. these challenges is also yeah. super important yeah. and not overstating them. Yeah. Uh, so in the end, the new Oro tribe wins, uh, sending Rob, you and the Argento tribe to trial council. And in the meantime, yeah. we see Sam completes, completes the puzzle and he is allowed to select any advantage from the vault and just get it for free. Now, Sam also was kind of fortunate because the only person voted out of the game so far, Jen, <laughs> happened to give her two coins to Sam. So Sam had more coins than anyone else going into this round, and he leveraged that quite well because he was able to use the, the the freeness of it all to get an immunity idol, which was only good for one round, and that's why it was the cheapest thing on the menu, but you could extend it with additional coins, and he extends it two rounds. 
But then later on, we also see he decides to get this challenge advantage. How do, how do you feel about that strategy, Emily, about getting two advantages as a way to kind of mask the one that you're getting personally? I mean, I definitely saw that coming. Like if like with him coming off the jump, like him coming back, Rob was just eliminated. Like he knows that his days are numbered. So it it makes sense for his strategy to come forward with kind of like a gift to his tribe in addition to the immunity. I feel like I would have done a similar thing. I definitely would have taken the the immunity idol and been like, you guys have to fight it out now because then the real colors will be will come out. Um, so yeah. I I think it was an interesting strategy for him to kind of give that like give that token of peace almost. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I think it was I think it was a strong strategy as him. But obviously, looking back, I mean, it's not one that was it was it was not one that was veiled. Like everyone knew what the attempt was. So I feel like you can yeah. kind of see it from both perspectives, but I think it's better to approach it trying to come as a friend um, than just come mm-hmm. and choosing violence with just like, immu- just choosing the immunity. I'll be like, uh, I have something with me because if someone had knowledge is power, then he'd be SOL. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I- and Sam did have that luxury of knowing knowledge of pa- his power is also on that menu when he selected everything. So probably works well in his favor there but we we can talk about that after we finish this first episode uh rob did you have something you want to say yeah i just said i i mean i agree i i echo what emily was saying about him um doing that leveraging anything he could i think in these minis it's so hard to find any sort of leverage because of the just the abbreviated amount of time so i think anything that you can bring over um and come as a friend is really just in your back pocket so I echo what Absolutely. I mean. so that's and all I was going to say. Challenge, <laughs> a challenge advantage can't really be understated, too, because yeah. sometimes the best way to ensure you're still there is winning a challenge. Right. More time, more it buys you more talk time, so it makes sense. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So we spend a little bit of time with the new Oro tribe. They, they've won the challenge at this point, so not a much, but it's a little bit of that analysis. Emily, again, we were talking about your decision to pick Naropa. We've seen Naropa's decision to pick an original Oro tribe member, and his intention between, behind that was to make those connections. And I think, Emily, this kind of goes to show you were correct in picking Naropa because he had that same mentality of you of, okay, we can stick to these old tribe lines, but we can also just build this new tribe up in this swap because we aren't beholden to people, which is really funny when we look at the decision that the rest of the Oro tribe makes in the next episode and the reasoning they use to go after Naropa. Yeah, it's tough. I Part of me wishes he had chosen one other person from Argento just to make it evenly split. Mm-hmm. I totally understand where he's coming from because he he's coming out of the gate like we don't have any, it's only been one round. There's really not that many partnerships established. But I think people are going to go with what is a safe option. So I do wish he'd chosen maybe one other person from Argento just to have us evenly stacked. So it was more, it put us in a fair playing perspective. But I do think him choosing Andy C did put us in a benefit because it did help us form mm-hmm. that partnership. Um, it just obviously played out as we saw, um, <laughs> as we saw with my demise. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that was, I, I was, I don't regret uh, picking Naropa at all. And I do respect his gameplay because I see where he was going with it. I honestly think what partially happened is seeing Argento throw Rob out like mm-hmm. so quickly, I think really kind of shook our tribe a bit when it right. came to making decisions. It's like, oh, they're sticking to original. We might need to stick to original. So I think it's it it kind of put obviously Sam, myself, and Europa in really sensitive positions because we were really the only shakeups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm sure Rob also would have appreciated if Naropa had taken <laughs> an original Argento too. <laughs> yeah. uh, that would have yeah. been, he wasn't the only Oro on that yeah. side. Yeah, it would have been right. a, more of a split, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, let's let's get into the Argento tribe here. Uh, we see Simona talking uh, about re- being really happy that Carly first picked her. She was already getting good vibes from Carly, really felt like she was connecting to her. And really hope Carly first picking her meant that Carly was also feeling the same way and that the two of them could really work together. Um, We see Yap also being like the last person picked from that original Argento tribe. Uh, Kind of 
you know, has some second guessing things. And, and this is one of those big things we see uh, in the conversations that Oro Tribe's having too in, the, in their confessionals. Jabbar is kind of saying the same thing, where Jabbar is like, yeah, we have a majority here, but I kind of feel like I'm on the bottom of it. And we see Yap also having those concerns. And, and then we really get into the meat uh, of the rest of this episode. And that is the discussion of who's going to go home. Obviously, there there is the one outlier in you, Rob. And <laughs> generally, like the name you put out and everything is, is Carly. And that's because Carly oh, yeah. really struggled in that second, por second portion of the challenge, getting the card into the solo cup, which... I'll be honest, not an easy task. It sounds <laughs> super easy. Cards, not easy to manipulate. And peeking behind the curtain here, when we tested this challenge, I was like, oh yeah, this is super easy. That's because I have a massive arm span and can stand four feet away and drop a card into a cup. <laughs> not everyone has yeah. that advantage. This is tricky. And Carly tries to get ahead of it as all of you are in a room together and Kawhi's just apologizes for it. And immediately we see almost the entire tribe saying, don't worry about it. Like this is, and we see this conversation uh, pop up, I believe in episode three again, or maybe it is this one where the challenges in these games are so unique and it's not the same that you can't really judge someone based on their ability to drop a card into a cup and hold that against them because there's the likelihood of that being relevant again in the tribal phase is next to zero but rob you, you kind of have to latch onto this as this obvious target so so walk us through that decision of, of pushing carly here and right. did you feel like you were getting any leverage with anyone or did you feel like you were just kind of being like walled out of conversation I really didn't feel like I was uh, getting that far with anybody. I thought that the best chance I had was with um, Andy and Evan. And even that, even I, I thought that they were like the schemers of the group. So, so forth. Um, but it's, I really didn't feel like um, I was really getting any kind of leverage with them at all. And I, and I will say like, looking back on it, I do think it was a big mistake to try and push the vote onto Carly simply because of it something like so minuscule, especially in a mini, like a challenge performance. I don't think like really challenge performance can hold any weight um, in, in, in a mini at all. I think like in a, in a long game, um, if you, if that person is like, if there's a person that's really bad at challenges and it's killing you, it's over a longer period of time. So I think just like natural human emotions, you get like more and more sick of that person. But because of the abbreviated time in a mini, um, I think challenge performance just holds less weight, not only because it really doesn't matter of like if the challenges aren't going to repeat themselves. Um, but I think like natural human emotion, it just doesn't like wear on people as much. And it's not as much like, if someone's really bad at challenges because it's so short in a mini, you're not going to really like notice it as much and you wouldn't be thinking about it as much as you would in a long game. Um, so like immediately targeting Car Carly there, I knew was, was a mistake. Although from my initial, like um, my initial like thoughts on the tribe, I, th I thought that um, she probably wasn't, having like a lot of conversations with a lot of people. So I thought that um, she not or wasn't necessarily like um, on the in crowd with people. So that that was what made me want to go with uh, Andy and Evan and try and mm -hmm. pitch to them because I thought out of everybody, they would want to be the schemers and uh, mix things up just on the, the way they um, they were talking and the way they, you know, were approaching the game to me. So that's really actually interesting. I've obviously only had that one round to like talk with them, but it's very interesting your perception versus my initial perception in terms of like who would be the schemers. That's very intriguing. Please yeah, elaborate because I'm yeah, so please. intrigued by that. You can't leave yeah. us hanging like that, Emily. Yeah, um, yeah, come on. I I would have said I would have said probably Andy because mm -hmm. uh I yeah, I would have probably said Andy, but then I probably would have said um probably Carly to be the person to like work with um I just like 
based on just like her skill set outside and in regular life like and like how like she like just like her career and like some of the like her skill sets in the back end make her have like a really good feel feel for reading people like a really good like analysis of like how I feel like perceptions of people and I think that Mm -hmm. that would make her someone you'd want to strategize with more and I think it makes her harder to read as well um I would say um and then I think also I probably like I probably if you were feeling kind of on the outs uh or feeling kind of on the outs I probably would have called on Yap who felt like he probably was insecure as to where he was with the team um based on getting picked last so I probably would have gone with one of those three um just based off like how they were how they might have been feeling based on the pick and also based on the information I gathered from them in the very beginning but um but I yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't have chosen Evan initially just because not not that I don't think he I think he definitely had a lot of strategy in him but I don't think he would play it earlier on I would I would have waited for him to play it later to be honest yeah. that's my thought process and 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 um I echo what you said about Carly but the way things shook up when I got in there um obviously I was gonna have to scramble with the people that I just happened to be in the room first with yeah and mm-hmm. I could have picked up on you know that with Carly, I wish I would have gotten into the room with her, but it just so happened that I was in the room with Andy and Evan C- or Andy, <laughs> uh, Andy and um, Evan first. So I I just kind of had to really go for the first people that I got placed with, to be honest. That makes um, sense. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't really have to like I like I said I didn't have time to go to each person and gather what they were thinking and like um, what they had done and then apply that to also how they were going to play the game. You know what I mean? Like, and I, like, I echo what you said about Carly and talking to her post game. Um, She seems really smart and social and adaptable. Not seems, I know she is um, but in the conversations I've had post game. And I do think that with those conversations and obviously I know um, she's friends with Carrie. Um, so I think that, and I, I've played with Carrie in previous games and went really far with her. So I think that Carly and I could have worked together and I wish I would have had um, a chance to have those conversations with her. But yeah, I mean, it honestly, it was really, like I said, who, who I ended up having to pitch to first is, is who I, I was going to go with. Um but that didn't make me think any less of the Andy and uh, Evan were schemers, especially because they were, you know, so open with me and, and they were listening to me. And like, you know, it, I was thinking that if, if anybody, it was going to be them. So obviously to me, for them to be even receptive to me, like I thought that they were the schemers of the group. I always think it's interesting people who like have played with other people who played before or played with people who organize the game. Because I'm, I mm-hmm. obviously no one's gonna let that out. Like when they're like, "Oh, how did you hear about the game?" I was like, "Oh, you know, like one of my friends um told me about it." I was trying to be very vague that one of my best friends does this very frequently and <laughs> literally had her birthday party survive their team. Like, yeah. so I was like, "I wish I played that." So like, I was so I was very intrigued. And it's funny that you say like Carly knows Carrie because none of us were gonna let that information out. But I'm always intrigued yeah. to see like how someone's game if it's like similar to their friend. Or like, yeah. just so it's it's just very intriguing um, yeah. because obviously yeah. that comes out after the game and you're like, oh my gosh, that uh, makes sense. Yeah. Or, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. And I mean, it, it, it's we have a lot of connections on this tribe, yeah, or just in this game in general, right? I mean, Emily, of course, you're best friends with Lily. Rob, you have played a game with almost all of production. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Kayla is good friends with Carrie and McKenna. Carly is friends with Carrie. Uh, Kyle is a very good friend of mine. They're, 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 these are the people that we like. Say, hey, we have applications. Check it out. Yeah. And and, and then you bring it, and we're so happy when you bring it. Yeah. But, yeah. but it is one of those things that we haven't quite seen that evolution in the strategy in the DCP games of wait, how exactly? did you find out about this? Because I want to use those relationships. I mean, I kind of did it in, in Exile Island a little bit when I realized um, Mike Simmons already had Austin as a friend on Facebook prior to, because it was a long game, uh, prior to us swapping onto the same tribe. I'm like, oh, so you already know each other. 
and, and mm -hmm. like it's those connections but we haven't seen that strategy happen in a minute yet so i'm very interested now that we've had this conversation people are going to watch this if we have right. that in the future where people are like hey which prod member do you know right <laughs> which former could which former castaway do you know who is it that right. is going to connect <laughs> these people i but i also think that like I mean, obviously now it's out that I like know Lily because this is going to be going to be done and stuff like that. But I think it's also something we said, like if you're on with like a new set of cast members that I, mm -hmm. I do think people are probably not going to reveal that because also yeah. like some of some of my closest friends, some of them I play more like and some of them I'm more compatible, i.e. compatible skills, not the same way we yeah. play it. So I feel like it's very um, it's very interesting. Yeah. And I had mentioned it in one of my confessionals that I had obviously played a game with um, all of production. And that was honestly like a big fear of mine coming into the mm -hmm. game that that would have gotten out and it would have put a target on my back. Cause obviously that is going to be a massive, massive target. Like to know that, you know, I was not only played with, but very close with some of the members of production and, and, in, um, in our game. So yeah, yeah. it's, uh, it definitely was a, a big, big time fear of mine going in. And it was something I was thinking about, you know, from the, from the jump. Yeah. I mean, before I, before I started to want to build an alliance with Andy C, when he let it slip that he played before, I was like, he's got to get gone. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, but then, yeah. but then I, but then I kind of flipped the scope when he said he plays a really loyal game. I, that's why I came out and said like, Hey, I initially wanted to vote for you because I saw you as a threat, but now I think this is an opportunity. If you play a loyal game, I want to play a loyal game. Let's talk. Yeah. So yeah. I, but I, I definitely think you're right, Rob. Honestly, I would have put, I would have put the target on your back had I known that. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'll exactly. own that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't a feather, my cap. Um, but it, it is interesting of like, what is the correct strategy to mm -hmm. say, like of how many times to say that you've played, you know, is, yeah. is it zero? And, and obviously you can have that conversation, you know, forever about what is the right amount, because sometimes like Andy C, you can use that at, to your advantage and say, Hey, you know, this is my track record. This is how I played the game before. So, um, this is what I'm going to do moving forward. And then is it also better to say, oh, I'm a newbie. I don't have any kind of experience. Just take a hold of me and take me to the end. So like, it's an interesting conversation that to say, what is the exact correct strategy? Obviously I had chosen in this game um, to say that I was a newbie to people. So I, I had gone with that, but um, you can have obviously a, a long, long debate about what, what is the right amount. Because I also think on the opposite end of the spectrum, besides the newbie, like someone saying I've played like 20 times, like I, I don't want that person in any game, but mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just me. No, and we, we saw that concern in the first episode where yeah. uh, Simona and Yap were like, oh, I let it slip that I play these games because a lot of the times in this community, people have played a lot of games. Right. And, exactly. And so, so their assumption is, oh, we're playing this game. Everyone's probably played a lot of games and, and we tend to have a newer cast when it comes to people playing. So so it does have that fear and and something as menial as, oh yes, I've played a ton of these games can be used as ammunition against someone later. Let's right. let's move on here to this third episode. We're just gonna go. I mean, Rob, unfortunately, you go home. Yeah. Five one. Uh it's a it's a clean sweep. And it, it's actually really interesting because there was a conversation about how going to tribal council is important because it like really shows trust. Mm -hmm. This tribal council feels like the one of the few examples where it doesn't build trust because it's such an obvious vote. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, this is like <laughs> the only situation where I wouldn't be happy going to tribal council because you're not actually solidifying. Yes, you voted together, but you voted together in an obvious direction. And unfortunately, Rob's the casualty of it. So I, I just don't like it in general. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, so we, we get into episode three here. And we get the charades challenge. Now, it's been done a few times in uh, in DCP history. And uh, let me tell you, there have been some hilarious moments that have come out of this. This is probably our least funny charades we've ever had. And it was also ridiculously fast. The Argento team, yes, had Sam's challenge advantage, which made meant they only needed to get 10 instead of 2. But they get through all of their order. Emily, before your it was remarkable. even gets through once. 
I know. It was remarkable. I mean, we definitely had some weak links, like in terms of I was watching it back and I was like, get off mute. Like, what are you? Yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, I definitely think we had a couple, a couple people who like, I think part of the thing is when you're look, watching it in a grid, people need to remember the sequence of who you're going before, who you're going after. You need to watch that person like a hawk. You want to watch everyone yeah. else, but you can't. You just need to watch the person who you're supposed to watch. And I think that my team didn't necessarily do that. And they definitely think that started us off on a little bit of slower thing. I don't think anyone necessarily had any, was bad at charades, but I think people get people watching their person and getting off mute was like a, a huge mm -hmm. thing, but that put us behind. And then we were already starting at a disadvantage. So, but really we got, we got our asses kicked. Like that was rough. <laughs> like that was a rough, and it was, I mean, I remembered it, but it's so rough watching it back. I was like, Oh, <laughs> shit. so yeah. <laughs> you bring up a really good point. And this is something all orders out there. Like little hints here. Sometimes the simplest thing you can do in a challenge like this is just make sure everyone in your Zoom is ordered. You can drag and move people whatever order you want in Zoom. Put your tribe in order so you can sequentially follow it and you know exactly yeah. what's going on. Have your mouse ready to unmute you immediately. Like It's those little types of preparation that I don't think people necessarily think about when they've never done these things before. Mm -hmm. But this is where I, I think... Um, the Argento tribe having more experienced org players really benefited them because they could do those little things. And of course, they also have, yeah, who's like, oh, yeah, I do this type of thing all the time and gives them a clue for shark. And then as soon as that clue is given to him, he guesses clam instead. Like, That's funny. it goes out there. <laughs> but another aspect of this challenge was that Oro, for winning the previous immunity challenge, got the opportunity to choose which of the three categories of animals they're going to act out. They could choose land animals, uh, marine animals, or air animals. Emily, what was the thought process? Like, did you guys quickly pick land animals? Or, so, or was there any, um, any consideration for the other two categories? So I do want to take fault for part of this because we were talking about it in our team and we were like, oh, like, I, and I was like, we should choose, and I think I was one of the people who said we should choose land animals, but I think mm -hmm. I was really quick to say that um, because I want it, because I was like, oh, like, you know, lion, bear, but like we ended up getting like camel, like that I like, like went over and like drew the humps like on my back, like, you know, mm -hmm. so I think my initial thought was, oh, land animals, because I can only really, really think of like 10 aquatic animals, but I think that what I should have said to the tribe instead was, I know land animals is going to be easier in terms of there are more land animals, but there's only going to be 15 words. And there's only th how many aquatic animals can each of us in this room think about. And mm -hmm. we should choose that one because then we can like, like we made a strategy for a couple like key land animals, like I think like lion and like a couple other ones, but there are just is so many more that I think mm -hmm. if had we chosen aquatic, I think we would have been in a better perspective. We would have been in a better position that I initially didn't consider. And I definitely take, partial fault for that piece for sure well Emily, i'm not going to blame you too much because in <laughs> testing for this challenge we on production made the same mistake because we didn't okay. know what the lists were we we're like yeah totally land animals totally easy there's a large variety of land animals there's a lot and i think one of the best parts of the strategy you guys said you guys did this like triangle thing where you would point to different points of this triangle oh yeah so that was that that was my idea that was yeah. uh that means where where were they where are they in the food chain are they mm. at the top of the food chain the middle or the bottom um in terms of like the food chain of the animal kingdom was the thought process yeah it was brilliant i because it really worked <laughs> they, I, I, there were times where people were struggling a little bit i actually think it might, it might have been you actually uh when you were getting the wolf clue yeah and, and then it was like top and it's like oh okay well now you know it's a predator and you're getting there and like you eventually get there but again how do you differentiate a dog and a wolf and and i think that's part of the thought process of why you guys didn't want like the aquatic animals and why you didn't want the air animals because how do you differentiate them i'll let you know this now the air animals one was by far the easiest <laughs> easiest category no one took it uh, but that was also part of like, I mean, we're also kind of jerks sometimes with production. We intentionally, <laughs> right? Where where we intentionally make it so that's, hey, 
this seems like the hardest, but it's actually the easiest. But we'll we'll let you try to figure it out and talk it out. Rob, where would you have landed if you had a voice in this conversation? Which one would you have wanted to do? Um, I don't know. I I'm pretty good with all animal categories. I think. Um, I definitely would have you know had to think about a a strategy. Um, and I'm sure I would have developed that with my tribe, but um, probably land. I think would be mm-hmm. my go to. I would say. I'm so intrigued with the air animals now <laughs> that you said that yeah, it was the easiest air. one. I can only think of three well, like, off the top of my head. Yeah, it, it, surprisingly, a lot of birds are very easy to differentiate from things. Things like owls, uh, things like, toucan. I remember, because we ran through it, and I just cut my hair really short, and we got, like, bald <laughs> eagle. I was just, just going to point to my head. Uh, uh, it, like, there's these little things that, that made it so that the birds were just really easy to differentiate. Also, there's, like, bat and things like that. Mm-hmm. It, it, there was just more things in the air than you think about initially when you hear <laughs> air animals. That's a good point. I didn't think about the different types of birds. I mean, I mean, initially, mm-hmm. when I was in the house, I just wasn't thinking about the vast different types of bird and their distinguishing qualities. <laughs> So, like so strategy. Paul, yeah, I, I, I was really convenient that I got that. <laughs> uh, so Argento wins uh, again. Like, they, they, they stopped you. I, I, I can't, I can't mince words here. It was, it was, uh, it was not. It's a blowout. Pleasant. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it wasn't close. But uh, we see Carly mm-hmm. talks about how Sam using the challenge advantage does build them uh, a bit of good favor with the tribe. Um, Simona felt bad about voting you out, Rob. So so that's good, because you had expressed in the episode that you did kind of feel a connection with Simona. Yeah, yeah. I Well, I mean, I did definitely feel like um, there was some, some, like, good to our conversation where I feel like she, you know, her and I could have connected down the road for sure. Um, so mm-hmm. I, I, Simona, wish I could have worked with you. <laughs> that was the hard sound, by the way. <laughs> Uh, and then we get Evan expressing his concerns for you and Europa, Emily, uh, just because, you know, they had to just vote someone out of uh, who was on the outs there. So hopefully that doesn't happen to uh, the two of you as well. And then we get the segment of Evan's burnt bagel. That was hilarious. <laughs> and how Evan had Tragic. to go off camera because his bagel was burning and almost caught fire. Keep your eyes out, uh, watchers. Uh, this bagel may make more appearances throughout the day. Uh, you'll you'll have to wait and see, though. Uh, maybe give us a bank <laughs> account eventually. Uh, <laughs> and more importantly, though, we have the original Argento tribe talking here as Sam's pulled for his confessional. Sam totally still has something, right? <laughs> so, so despite Sam trying to be like, yeah, I got this challenge advantage, it doesn't seem like it really missed it, the Sargento tribe. They still are suspicious of him having another advantage. Uh, but that's how it goes. Uh, that's yeah. how Survivor works. It's. I mean, I don't think any of them blamed him for it. They're like, they, they no. were all probably like, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, he totally has something else. <laughs> yeah. That's the and the other you... thing they were very hope. Sorry, what was that, Rob? I, I just said that's the price you pay. And like, and you have to take that into account in a season with a twist like this. Yeah. Uh, so they they also expressed they really hope that Emily and Europa have this opportunity to go into the vault before anyone else to get something to save them. Uh, but again, like you said, like the, what the quantities of things in the vault really kind of threw off some of the strategy about approaching the vault this round. Um, we see Andy uh, V talk about how he really hopes he can pull Sam in and how... You know, they probably won't focus Sam right away like they had to with Rob. But worse comes to worse. He can use a knowledge as power to take whatever advantage Sam had in the first place. Um, Yeah, and then we uh, we get into the Oro tribe here, which I have to say, the way things shot out on this tribe was... So fascinating and so interesting because, again, initially it does kind of look like Emily and Europa, you guys are on the outs. That that you're outnumbered, and especially after Rob going. Like, the consequences of Rob going, we see Andy C. really talk about it a lot, where 
they stuck tribe strong. They voted out Rob. If we take one of our own here, we are going down to four of us. And they also have Sam and could just be working on him here. So how do you navigate that? Like, Emily, just walk us through how you approach the situation. Like, knowing you are outnumbered, but you and Naropa work so hard on literally everyone in this tribe in order to get one person to work with you. Yeah, I think the first thing is identifying is Naropa and I are like, yeah, we're in it. We're together. That's what we got to mm. do, like divide and conquer. Um, I think the other thing was also when we first one thing that did make obviously the the cut was like when we first joined um, or or maybe it did. I, I, I rewatched the third episode today, but I have to rewatch the second episode. Mm. But um, but essentially, when we first joined, a lot of Oro was like, oh, what, what do you know about the other tribe? Like, what do you know about the other tribe? What do you know about the other tribe? And so we would give out like little pieces of little bits. I would give out little like non-important bits of information. Be like, oh, so-and-so is from California. He has a sister, <laughs> like things like that. But I'm like, I'm not gonna like, but I think from the early on, like knowing that you can't share everything and because mm-hmm. there is, because we are, are in a minority. And if you don't show your value in one way or another, then, um, then you can't, like help so I did not tell them that Carly what Carly's like background is in terms of like mm-hmm. working with like neuro I didn't talk and getting her doctorate I didn't tell them that and that um I didn't tell them that Andy V is a math teacher and like that is like a huge component so like I was trying not to tell them that information because I wanted to like not only would that still partially stay loyal to my original tribe when we if I made it to the combination it would also mm-hmm. like I also still had that information to play so um, I definitely kind of weighed in on that piece. Um, and then I think the other things were, I will say me and Naropa, like we were, we kind of did what Kayla said in the episode. Like we did not throw out names. We waited for names mm-hmm. to get thrown out to us. And it's funny because in the Facebook chat, people were like, oh, like Emily and Naropa, like trying to scheme or whatever. I was like, no, dude, if I, if I said that someone threw your name, if I said someone threw your, you threw someone's name out, it's because you did. Like I didn't throw mm-hmm. anyone's name out. So I just kind of wait, we kind of waited to see what people presented to us. And so yeah. when we were talking, uh, it was very clear that it was two, two, two. So it was really mm-hmm. like, which two is going to break. So I think very early on, we, me and Europa were able to tell that like Kayla and Kyle were not tearing, like they were going to stick together. Yeah. And then it was really Andy and Jabbar who were kind of up for play. And I think what kind of hurt Kyle and Kayla is when they said, yeah, we who do you like we'll throw like me and Europa like we're not we're sticking together we're not gonna break and they're like okay we want to work with you guys we're fine to throw out either or so when you say mm-hmm. either or Jabbar or Andy C and then when me and Europa got to them we were just like hey they said either one they didn't name a specific person but they said either one of yeah. you we get to decide and so that obviously initially kind of breaks the trust that they had with their initial team and that puts both of them mm-hmm. at a vulnerable point and wanting to play so I feel like myself and Europa didn't necessarily have to take much aggressive action. We just had to take more defensive action. I think where it hurt us was um, was that I think we didn't have enough time to like without Kayla and Kyle there to really solidify and really comfort Andy and Jabbar long term. I think we were at mm-hmm. a point where we talked to them a couple of times. We kind of had a plan on the table, but obviously we know people are meeting behind their back. Um I kind of had a feeling that Naropa or myself would go under. Naropa was talking about maybe giving me an extra vote going into the vault. And we were mm-hmm. thinking about maybe getting a muted idol. But then when I went in, there was no muted idol to be had. So that was like, well, that's scrapped. And then in terms of the extra vote, I was thinking about going back to the vault to go in and get it. But then I felt pretty solid in that Jabbar and Andy C were going to vote for Kyle. So after our conversation, after I felt really comfortable with Andy C after I, we had that kind of very candid conversation about playing a loyal game. Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of where we came from. Obviously some uh, speeches at the end kind of yeah. did some of, but I, I think that's partially on, on our fault because I feel like we built that mm-hmm. relationship with Andy C and him talking about loyalty, but, but Jabbar wasn't part of that conversation. So I think if he was, if he was in that conversation, I feel like he would have known that Andy C was kind of playing the game and kind of trying to give Kayla and Kyle some comfort. But I think if he was in there, he would have known that Andy was kind of just trying to 
would know where his loyalties led, but I think it just mm-hmm. kind of was a tough situation. And honestly, I, if I was in Joe Barr's seat, I probably would have made a similar decision because like there is like, he had like, because he was feeling vulnerable about being like the last pit, like being one of the, one of the last picks, like, and Kyle and Kayla throwing out kind of either or super frequently, he had to protect yeah. his own like ownership in the game. Well, you mentioned the immunity idol, and, and and this is a good time to get into the vault. So we see the first person into the vault is uh, Andy C. And he goes in there, he buys the steal a loser advantage because he was gifted the three coins from you, Rob. Yeah, you gave them yep. to Andy. Yep. Uh, so he buys the steal a loser, which allows the winning tribe to capture someone from the opposing tribe, they don't have to go to tribal council afterwards. So his intent was if we win the next challenge, we can just take Sam and we don't have to worry about it. And then he also purchases the knowledge is power. And and he, he gets the knowledge is power over the immunity idol. And I think this is quite smart. And we see this actually kind of come up a lot in this episode when we really pay attention to the vault segments because Jabbar goes in there afterwards and Jabbar is like, I'm going to buy the, in the immunity idol and then he comes out of the vault and he tells Kayla oh yeah they have like an immunity idol for two coins so like make sure you get in there and like like make sure they don't get it but when Kayla goes into that vault there is no hidden immunity idol there there's no knowledge is power there's no uh steal a loser advantage because there's only one of everything in the vault and we see Kayla going into the vault after every single person visits it to yeah. check that advantage list. Yeah. And the only reason she realizes this is because Jabbar let it slip that there was an immunity idol. And then when she went there, she didn't see it. So she also forces Jabbar to admit he has a hidden immunity idol. Rob, yeah. like, advantages in a game. Like they, they can make or break your game. Yeah. Yeah. How do you handle a situation like this where essentially all the advantages in this game are known. Right. Right. I mean, I think that at the end of the day, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, I think, like you said, all the, like the advantages are going to be known. And especially with a twist like this, everyone is going to be on high alert and assuming that everyone has something. So I think that immediately changes the way you play and kind of makes you maybe play a little bit more safe. Um, Like Emily said, uh, Jabbar was like protecting himself in the vote in a sense. So I think um, they can produce some really, um, I don't want to say conservative, but more safe gameplay. Um, I think everybody, every, like I said, everyone is on high alert and everyone assumes everyone has something. Um, So yeah, I think that it it produces some, um, you know, safer gameplay. That's, that's what I'll say. And, and watching it back, I do regret. I mm-hmm. think I would have stayed in the game had I gone had I gone with Naropa's original plan of him giving me a coin <clears throat> and getting an extra vote. I watched right, that back and I, I was like, "Why didn't you do that?" Like, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. I was I was surprised because I actually didn't remember that being mentioned at all. Uh, I didn't. Either. I was su- surprised it was it was happened right there. It's like let's do this. And I'm also surprised Naropa offered to give you that extra vote because that could really be a death sentence to him in that situation. But I think it it really speaks platitudes to how well you were able to connect with Naropa in that situation that he trusted you despite the fact that in in this situation sometimes the only way you two can preserve yourself is to vote for each other and this is a conversation this is something that happens to survivor all the time i'm going to shamelessly plug here mckenna and i discussed this on the survivor rewind on the specialist channel uh just uh this last week and two weeks prior to that because it's happening in survivor 46 right now so uh if you want to, a more thorough discussion of this position that Emily and Naropa end up finding themselves in. Check out the specialists. Small plug. But, <laughs> small. but it, it, it's so fascinating because in the end, you two sticking together is really strong here. And like you said, this is a grouping of three groups of two. It's very clear Kyle and Kayla are working together at this point. Uh, Kayla mentioned she really wants to work with Kyle and Andy C., but Andy's kind of feeling sketched out by Kyle at this point, which is ultimately what really drives him to voting with you and Naropa here is that he wants loyalty. He's preaching loyalty and Kyle playing the game and just like saying someone saying a name makes Andy not feel 
very comfortable with them. And, and I think it's really interesting when we evaluate that moving further on, because Andy's the one who ends up pitching Naropa as the target that Kayla, uh, Kyle, and Jabbar end up voting for. Andy is the one who says, no, we should vote Naropa. He seems like, you know, he has some knowledge of the game, but he's new. Uh, at this point, I, I'm pretty sure everyone knew that he like just like came into the game like right before it. So he felt that Naropa was more likely to be original tribe strong, which I I don't think was a very accurate read because I, because I, I, quite frankly, I don't think neither you nor Naropa were feeling that way. I think you both were like, whatever, it's been one round. Let's just figure this out. But that's what ultimately ends up with Naropa getting the votes here. Yeah. And it's so interesting. It's really interesting seeing a more seasoned player like Andy C approach this because you had mentioned it almost right off the bat when we were talking earlier, he believed you and Kyle had a, like knew each other pregame just because Kyle picked you first yeah. in that. And <laughs> no, you don't at all, <laughs> but it, it, it's just so funny with, with, because it couldn't be further from the truth because you're both brand new players to the org community living on opposite sides of the continent from each yeah. other no way you could possibly know it's just so funny that, like that's the approach people take to these games sometimes it's like what are the pre-existing relationships how do i have to evaluate it and kyle simply saying hey maybe we get to bar out and and again i think that really speaks credit to what you and naropa were able to do in this situation because everyone really seemed to want to work with you too and, and that's very flattered when i watched that back it didn't <laughs> yeah good because you should be because that's how well you played this middle position and that's what it came down to you took a position that should have been a minority position turned it into a middle position and then we're able to leverage it and unfortunately somehow you got the worst possible outcome of it but that happens sometimes in survivor and, and ultimately the weirdest thing about this episode is we're just going to get wrapped up here Andy steals Jabbar's idol and plays it for himself. Now, at this point, the big name we've heard, Kyle was pitching Jabbar earlier in the episode. So it doesn't really quite make sense for this to be there. But Andy had enough fear that the votes were coming on him, which ultimately, and this is my read, Andy, please feel free to comment and lambast me saying how wrong I am. This does almost feel like Andy doesn't quite trust you, Emily, and Naropa yet because he thinks you might be working with Kyle and Kayla to vote him out in this situation. Yeah. It was, it, uh, it, yeah. It, I wish he had played it on Naropa. Yeah, I wish he had played it on Naropa. I think that this was really like this. I, I respect the way he played it because this is mm -hmm. his way of saying, like this vote was mine and Naropa's way to prove our loyalty yeah. to that alliance, but Absolutely. it just came. It just came so came that his speech was so moving that it un unraveled some of the security that Jabbar had, and I. So I think, and but he gave that speech to let Kayla and Kyle know. Like he was, he gave that speech to kind of let Kayla mm. and Kyle know if they were gonna vote with us, not to do that, and it also yeah. let um and. It was, he was also kind of trusting that myself and Naropa would stick to our guns regardless of what he said, which is what him and I were planning to do. I think if we had mm -hmm. had another minute in the scramble, I think he could, I feel like he could have like let us know like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to give a speech to get off or sent, or at least give that information to Jabbar that the game would have changed. But I understand why yeah. he played the immunity on himself because this was our way to, to establish that loyalty and trust. But it was kind of a bummer because I was like, had he played it on Naropa based on like, had we had another bit of minute or he had trusted us and he played it on Naropa, it would have been a totally different game. Well, and I think he plays it on himself here. It's really weird when we get into the layers of it because theoretically, and Kyle messaged me this actually after the episode aired, that Andy should have played the idol on Naropa because he knew the votes were going on Naropa. But it almost feels like you guys telling Andy that Kyle was so willing to cut him and Jabbar 
it made it so that he didn't trust that Kyle was voting for Naropa so that he had to play it for himself in a self-preservation move instead of a, okay, let's get Kyle out move. I, I think there's yeah. a lot of nuance to this decision here. And Rob, maybe you have some input on it because this is just, uh, it's, there are so many different layers of, okay, just, is Jabbar getting the votes? Like, do I let Jabbar play this idol? Do do I need to play it because I don't trust anyone? Do I play it on Naropa so that we actually get Kyle out of this game? How would you approach that situation? Um, I mean, I think, well, it's hard for me to not put it, like, have a biased answer because I, like, uh, in saying who, like, I was close with and connected with, um, mm -hmm. because I personally for me i felt comfortable with jabbar um and i yeah. honestly i would have i would have been with jabbar um you know he was probably my number one and it's interesting like you know we can get into the dynamics of how i felt about um you know my tribe another time i guess but mm -hmm. um you know i mean i definitely felt really comfortable um with jabbar and if i was in his shoes because things ch can change so quickly in a mini and um you know you only have what is it 20 25 minutes to really plan for the votes um i probably would have played the idol for myself in his shoes as well so that's you know that's what i what i would have done there's a great adage in survivor in the survivor community that you just have to get past one vote and then it's a brand new game right every every round's a brand new game so i understand the self-preservation here andy I, I, yeah Trust me, as someone who has played an idol twice and it has never negated enough votes to change anything, good on you. Self-preservation yeah. is one of the most important things in Survivor. Yeah. It's called Survivor for a reason. Right. You need to survive. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, so I, I will think never I, condemn you for doing that. Yeah, I think especially in, you know, in a mini environment, and I don't want to keep harping on that, but I think you have to look out for yourself first and foremost. Um, I think, you know, preserving allies, especially when you know that things can change so quickly as they had had just done. Um, I think preserving mm -hmm. allies, the, the weight on it is not as as high. So I think you have to look out for yourself. I would have played it for myself. So we, we get to the vote and Andy does in fact vote with Emily and Naropa for Kyle. Jabbar gets a bit spooked by Andy's speech and also ends up voting Naropa with Kyle and Kayla. Thus, based on the DCP rules, it's an immediate yeah. rock draw. And mm. in a rock draw, the people who have votes cast for them are immune and don't have to draw rocks. So Kyle and Naropa are both immune in this situation. Andy is immune because he has played an individual immunity idol. Emily, the odds were completely in your favor <laughs> that someone else was going to go here. There's a two to one chance you and Naropa could have stayed together, but unfortunately the survivor guide gods felt like depriving us of you <laughs> for the rest of the season and you get rocked out. How does it feel? How does it feel knowing you didn't actually get voted out of this game. Um, first of all, I loved going to work the next day or next week and telling everyone I didn't get voted out. Uh, <laughs> technically. Um, mm -hmm. um, as soon as it went to rocks, I knew it was going to be me. Like I knew, <laughs> I felt it. Like I, right. I'm a yeah. very intuitive person. And like, I, like I felt it in my bones. I was like, Oh, it's me. It's going to be me. <laughs> and then when it went on me, I was just like, LOL. Like, I was just like, I like, and it, I don't think it was like a self-fulfilling prophecy or anything, but I was just like, I had, I just got like a feeling in my gut that it was going to land on me. So I like started to kind of mentally prepare. Um, That's why I was a little bit, you probably saw it in my face, a little bit more shock when I went to rocks. So I was like, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew it was going to be me. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a bummer. I wanted to play more. Um, I also, as soon as I got out, I was like, oh shoot, like Naropa's on his own now. And like mm -hmm. that really sucks because like we had developed those relationships i do think it like but at the same time i am i'm really excited to see how the rest of the season unfolded after i left because like i said i try not to read too much into the spoilers i know who won but i don't know the order everyone out went out mm -hmm. um so because i like want to see that unfold and i'm intrigued to see because i honestly feel like my going out really really shook it up because at the end, because mm -hmm. it showed that Andy and Naropa and me were working together, it showed mm -hmm. that Jabbar was able to come out and be like, oh, we were aligned and I just got spooked. And then it puts kind of Kyle and Kayla on the outs a little bit in terms of like, 
knowing who aligns with them and who doesn't. So I am really excited to see how that untuned. And that's why I gave Naropa my coins because I didn't, because I was just like, listen, I know the odds are stacked against him, but I knew if he had coins and he got into the vault first, Mm -hmm. he'd be able to stay longer until they started to cannibalize against each other. So I was like, that would give him some time. Um, But yeah, you know, it just happens. It's just, just the luck, just the luck of the draw. So (laughs) no, no hard feelings. I was happy. I wasn't technically voted for. So, you know. And you joined a very prestigious group of people who have been rocked out of our games. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, we, we, it's happened a lot. And uh, let's just say, like, some heavy hitters who have been rocked out of this game. And I don't I think mean, you are any exception to that. I mean, Kyle kept saying, like, he said it, like, quite a couple times in conversations. He's like, I just want to make sure we everyone's clear so we don't go to rocks. And he kept saying that, like, a couple. Yeah. He said it, like, two or three times, like, when mm. I was on, on with him. And so I kept on being like, it's fine. <laughs> so he'll be fine. Yeah. And then it's just hilarious that that's how I got knocked. Um, but um, I do want to say I'm not sure how much time we have left in the interview. But um, Naropa, so much love for saying I was one of the smartest players. I'm not, but I really appreciated that. That made my day. I was just like, oh my gosh, compliments. <laughs> like, that was great. So really, really enjoyed working with him and really loved uh, loved the compliment. But I honestly felt like him and many. I felt like he was one of the smarter players. Um because one of the smartest players by sh- by far so it was really great to work with him mm-hmm. but honestly a lot we had a lot of intelligence in this game which made it very intriguing yeah yeah absolutely uh so do, we do have a couple of uh questions from our viewing audience here and Ooh, okay. some of them are production members but that's Boy. fine <laughs> uh first off rob carrie would like yeah. you to describe your game with a taylor swift era um <laughs> I, I'm going to say that this one is red because, you know, red, she had gotten like stabbed in the heart and was really singing about that a lot. And uh, you could really feel the emotion. Um, so I also got stabbed in the heart with the, uh, with the swaps group. So I'm going to say that my game was red. That was my era this time around. And uh, you know, it's, it also is my favorite era. So <laughs> okay. there you go. I associate my favorite ah. Taylor Swift era with a, with a game of survivors. So that, that's the love in my there heart I have for CP. <laughs> uh, high praise, for sure. Emily, uh, your fellow castmate Sam would like to know, what were your plans for merch? Like, what, how are you going to work moving forward in this game? Who are you going to work with? What, what, how are you going to approach the next segment of this game? Yeah, so I think my goal would have been to stick with Naropa, and I think I would have wanted to see how the alliances fell on the other team. On... Um, I think I would have wanted to stick with Jabbar, Andy C, myself, and Europa. Um, not because I didn't really enjoy working with my OG team, but by the time we would have gone into their team, we would have been the outsiders. So my thought would be mm. probably, I also, no alliances would have ever been promised to that original team. So I would have had a good yeah. rapport with them, but not established alliances. And I also would have lost a lot of talk time of which they would have been able to develop their skill sets. So I was planning on sticking with Jabbar, Andy C, and Europa and myself, and then taking out Kyle and Kayla. And then I thought mm-hmm. by then we would go into the merge. No, hey, Kayla, go queen. <laughs> 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 that was kind of my thought. Uh, yeah, no, that makes total sense. Um, Rob, what type of strategy do you come into this game? Uh, our Nick Cannon from uh, Monte Carlo would like to know. Can you can you repeat that? I'm sorry, you cut out for a little bit. Yeah, what was your what was strategy coming into the game? And did anything that happened in round one impact the way you viewed round two? Yeah, um, I would say my strategy coming into the game um, was to make as many relationships with as many people as I could, you know, up front at first. And I know that's a little bit of a vanilla answer. But again, I think in, in the mini environment, that's the most important thing is to create immediate connections um, to kind of, you know, fall, fall in line with, um, you know, and just kind of sink into the into the into the average averageness of everything. You know what I mean? It just kind of be there. Um, so that was like really what I wanted to do. And, and people who have seen my past games that I obviously played with production, um, that's the kind of player I am. Um, you know, I, mm-hmm. I'm a social player. Um, I'm not a game bot. I don't really think about, you know, like um, I don't run like all the numbers and the scenarios through my head is, is like over and over again. Um, 
my game, the core of it is relationships. So um, my strategy was to make deep connections um, with as many people as I possibly could and uh, have those carry me through the game. Um, as far as anything um, in round one that, that impacted what I did in round two, I wouldn't say there was anything that really held any weight that I could have done to change my fate in round two. Um, I think something that I could have done um, that I thought about after, after the game was bluff and immunity idol and saying that, Hey, um, you know, somebody went into the bank um, Andy C I was actually thinking about this after the game. And I thought Andy C I would have said him um, went to the bank, got an idol, gave it to me. And then um, I was, I would have been mm -hmm. able to successfully bluff the idol and say, Hey, he actually gave me the idol. So um, I'm not going to show it to you guys, but I have a hidden immunity idol and, you know, do what you want at this vote, but this is who I'm voting for. And then at that point, I think um, my target that I was pushing on Carly could have actually held some weight. So, but again, that's in a whole nother conversation for another time of, I think I yeah. did target the wrong person, <laughs> but mm. yeah. So is there anyone think, who you think you could have targeted instead that would have gained more traction? I don't think I had the time to really think about it. Um, and I That's don't, yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know the ins and outs of the tribe at all at that point. You know, mm -hmm. I never had a round with them. So really there was nobody that I was thinking of that I could have, but um, honestly, yeah, I think my best play probably would have been that lie to tell um, about Andy C giving me the idol. So especially because I, they knew that I had somewhat of a connection with Andy C because of the mm -hmm. thing, the Browns thing the that Browns. I said. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think that could have held some weight um, and it might have spooked some people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Emily, Ian. Uh, the host of our long games would like to know, would you have preferred the tiebreaker to be chugging water? A hundred percent. Ian is referencing a survivor event, which occurred, which me and it was me, um, him and two other players. And he essentially wanted me and this one player to break loyalty. But we said, no, you have to break. I said, no, I will. I'll go into the tiebreaker and take you out. And that's what I did. No hate, Ian. Good play. Good play. <laughs> but no, yeah, I absolutely would have killed it if we had a drink water. I would have had no doubt. All right. Okay. So, I mean, that brings us to the end of our time here. Uh, but before we go, we do have one important thing to say. Uh, I need each of you to describe your game in one word. Rob, let's start with you. I would say spunky. I made... Um... I think I made a little bit of a lasting impression on people. I think they knew that I would have been uh, basically the class clown of the group um, had I stayed in. And I think that would have worked in my favor, honestly. So spunky is my word. <laughs> All right. And Emily, same question to you. I think I'd say loyal because I developed the loyalty with Naropa and I was willing to kind of expand that loyal concept um, had it not been rocked out. So I think that would have been the, how I would have labeled my game. Excellent. Well, as much as it is a shame that I have to speak to you both so early, it was an absolute pleasure to get to catch up with you today. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel so you know when Can I say uh, one more everything thing? comes out. Yeah, absolutely. Rob. I just want to say thank you again to the production team for having me. Um, you guys do so awesome on these games and it was a pleasure meeting everybody. Um, obviously I've had a little more time post game than I did during the game to talk with everyone and get to know everyone. It's been a pleasure getting to know the whole DC fa DCP family. So I appreciate you guys having me. Thank you so much. Yeah, same here. It's, it was, it was honestly the worst part about getting out early is not getting to know everyone as well. Um, yeah, and getting, getting, yeah. And like not getting to hang out <laughs> as long, but really appreciate working with everyone, getting to know everyone for the time I did. Hopefully we'll play in another game together. If so, be on the lookout alliances. You yeah, played me here see. first. <laughs> um, <laughs> know that, um, I would, I would align with any of you in a future game and, uh, <laughs> thank you so much to the production crew. Seriously. The edits were so chef's kiss loved like the <laughs> transitions to different periods and we could not do without you guys. So thank you so much for making this happen. Yeah, well, on behalf of all of Dynamic Character Productions, uh, thank you both for your kind words. We, we really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Make sure you tune in 
to uh, episode four on Monday and episode five on Thursday this week. Uh, it's going to be more exciting. There's there's so much more happening this season. I'm so excited for everyone to see it. Uh, thank you once again, everyone, for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Can't wait. <laughs>